Here, in the wilds of China, exists a strange animal, which at times wears a helmet, setting it apart from the other beasts of the bamboo forest and the wide Chinese steplands, the Taute. The Taute once roamed free in hundreds of thousands over these wild lands stretching south from the Great Wall of China, but the encroachment of human habitation has driven their species down to near extinction numbers. As the chill of winter passes, the Taute breed sheds its coat, taking on a new colour in the early spring sunshine as it marks its territory. In order to constantly ensure its food supply, the Taute, which is a naturally greedy creature, must mark its territory at every opportunity to drive away other species in order to feed, feed, and feed some more. Territory marking is one of the ways the Taute ensures its dynasty will continue, despite the huge amount of competition for food from other creatures in the Chinese steppe lands. At times, the Taute is hunted by groups of uniformed poachers intent on its rich meat. Only by keeping a very low profile can he avoid his enemies. One of the Tautier's natural food sources is the small animal known as the Guai Guai. The Tautier sees a Guai Guai ahead and is eager to make the kill. However, it is accompanied by an adult of the species. So instinctively he knows this is not the right time to try and hunt it. Tautiers hunt guai guai in the long grass, shrubs and bushes, but must always avoid stumbling into a situation where the adult of the species or the uniformed hunters can suddenly appear, posing a danger harming the Taute. <laughs> Wisely, the Taute turns back its instincts keeping it alive to hunt another day. The water scooter. A man-made source of nourishment the Taute sees as an opportunity. The Taute considers a surprise attack from the rear to steal the water in these frozen, water-poor conditions. but possible enemies are coming. And another possible food source. So the Taute just bides his time. Studying all the potential prey from the high ground. The Taute spots a guai guai that is undefended, a potential meal, a potential defenseless food source, and considers the logic of an attack. The guai guai is too fast, disappearing into the undergrowth, and the tautier has to continue his hunt, still frustrated, underfed, still starving in the winter cold. Even though the first light of spring has come, his belly is empty, and the prospects look bleak. Vehicles, signs of human encroachment on the Taute's habitat. Eager to try and establish his territorial right, the Taute inspects them, 
considering whether to mark them as part of his territory. A risky business if the humans that own the vehicles should appear and attack in response to his territorial marking. He studies the situation, thinking tactically, and then decides it's too dangerous. The scooter is the natural enemy of the Taute, and since the habitat was encroached upon, many Taute's have been slain by random scooter appearances. Our subject Taute wisely keeps his distance and of course continues his quest for food. Walking into the rays of the setting sun, the rare and endangered Taute species must contemplate a difficult future. Like many Taute, this one our crew has been following for one year has been rendered sterile by contact with humans. He will never breed. He will not personally sire a dynasty, though others of his kind may do so. The weight of it is heavy upon his mind, but never as heavy as the quest for food. Can the unique Tautie species that has roamed the grasslands of China for millennia survive the ravages of time and change? The answer to that question is in our hands, for it is we who must make the decision to share our habitat with them.